Good morning, everyone. I am Nancy Froisland Hurl, a longtime member of Yardley United Methodist Church, and I want to take this moment to invite and welcome each and every one of you to our service on Zoom today. Some of you are on Zoom Live, some Facebook Live, and we also will be uh, sending our message out there to folks who maybe will join us later in the week on YouTube. Welcome to Yardley on this hot Sunday morning. I want to make a special thank you and a welcome to Pastor Bob Everett, who has been with us the past three weeks. It has been wonderful to have him here with us, and um, we wish him the best as he moves on to his next duties, wherever they may take him. He has been our interim pastor for these three weeks as we move to um, be welcoming our new pastor, Marsha, starting July 4th. Please open your hearts and prepare with the music that you will be hearing to put yourself into that place to be listening for the message of God and Jesus for us today. Would you please unmute yourselves and join me in this responsive opening prayer? Holy One, in peace or in pain, we call to you and you answer. Hear, Hear our, our voices, voices, O God. God. 
and the, and the cries, cries of, of our, hearts. our hearts. Come and bring us your presence. Come, Come and bring us your peace. peace. Amen. Amen. And would you please mute yourselves now as we sing together the spirit song. and satisfy your soul. Oh, let him have the things that hold you and his spirit like a dove will descend upon your life and make you The scripture reading for today comes from Romans 8, verses 6 through 11. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. 
But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. Here ends the reading of the scripture. Good morning. Verse 8 says, those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. So how are we pleasing God today? Has anything changed recently? Or are we just doing the same old, same old? This is the way life is, right? It's human nature. We have our lifestyles, the, the way we are, the way we do things, and for the most part, we're comfortable with that. Throw in a few friends or maybe somebody who cares about us, and we're good. But of course, we could be better. However, I, I wonder how much we even think about this stuff. We just live. We don't spend hours every day thinking about why we live or how we live. We just do it. If something is controlling us, we don't see it. We think we are in charge of ourselves. We are in control, except for the times when we are obviously not in control. Then somebody else tells us, get control of yourself. In fact, we really are in control, but most of us just don't think enough about that. We go along doing what we've done for as long as we can remember without even wondering why. Remember, I said, most of us, perhaps you're one of the ones who have considered this and have taken steps to reinforce or adjust your lifestyle. And you found out that life is better than good. For the rest of us, let's think about where we are and how we got here. I mean, where we are in the grand scheme of things, our lives, where our place is, and how we fit into where we belong, what we're supposed to do. We've been taught from the very beginning of our lives how to do things. Everyone around us have been teachers, advisors, mentors, and leaders. We watch, we listen, we learn, and we follow. Unless we do, at some point, or at many points, take control of our lives and determine how we will live, we'll find that our lifestyle is pretty much like those around us. For some of us, that's good. For others, that can be really bad. You see, what happens is we find the place considered normal for the people we allow to influence us, the standard bearers, the teachers, and the leaders we will follow. Their normal becomes our normal. And if we don't pay attention, we allow them to set the default position for our lives. Maybe it seems like we fit, but what are we fit for? We come here to worship this morning. Were you excited when you got up today, thinking about the time you would spend with other Christians? For some, this may be the only time you see an open Bible. For others, you may spend considerable time in God's word during the week. But either way, what's it like when you go out of here? Has anything changed? Have you been changed? When Paul wrote his letter to the Romans, a brief part of which uh, Nancy just read, he was expressing his concern that they were not experiencing the change that comes into our lives when we put our faith into Almighty God, in the risen Jesus Christ, in the active Holy Spirit. 
And so he explained to them how faith works. He talked about people living in their default mode, normal, doing and being what seemed natural to them. And then he contrasted that with the way the spirit of Christ enabled them to live, joyfully, actively, hopefully. Doesn't faith start in our minds, in our thoughts? What do we think about when we think no one will know? If we are Christians, we expect that when we're thinking about what we're thinking about, our minds will automatically go to Jesus and spiritual things. How's that working out for you? Me neither. Now, we have to be aware, stand guard over our thoughts and direct them toward the things of the spirit. Away from negative attractions and distractions and bad actions places where our minds go when we're not really paying attention. The Apostle Paul refers to this as our natural, meaning sinful, state. We have to get back in control and move on to the spiritual. Easy? No, we have to work at it. Perhaps a good place to start that work is by recognizing that we are more than what shows on the outside, what other people see of us, a human being with recognizable figure features and personality traits. There is another inner side to us that doesn't show on the outside. It's spiritual. And although everyone has this, many, many people have never connected with it. But when we do, it gives us a whole new life. It's like being born again. Do you remember where that phrase born again comes from? It's recorded in the third chapter of the Gospel of John. Just as an aside, do you remember another famous verse in John 3? Right, John 3:16. Some of you know it by heart. What is that now? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This was all part of a conversation Jesus had with a man named Nicodemus. Now, Nicodemus was not just any man. He was a rabbi a religious leader, and a teacher in Jerusalem, a member of the powerful Jewish council. He knew about Jesus, his preaching, his teaching, his healings, and his growing reputation among people who recognized him as God's son. So this man, Nicodemus, went to visit Jesus one night. He wanted to find out more. He told Jesus that he knew he was sent from God because without God, Jesus could not do the things he was doing. But could Jesus be the Christ, the promised Messiah that Jewish people had been waiting for? So this night, Nicodemus, the Pharisee, leader of men, follower of rules, brilliant teacher of religious law, became Nicodemus the student, questioning, listening, gaining new insights. During their conversation, Jesus asked Nicodemus about his relationship with God. Nicodemus replied that since his birth, he kept all the laws and rules required of men in order, in order to be worthy of God. So he was surprised when Jesus told him that was not enough. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. What? What are you saying? 
How can a man be born again when he is old? I'm an old man. Should I crawl back up inside my mother? Surely I cannot be born a second time. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth. No one can enter the kingdom of, of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. So you should not be surprised when I say you must be born again. Nicodemus spent his life uptight, trying to force himself to earn his way into the kingdom of God. And now, as an old man, he finds out that in his quest for perfection, he may have actually been pushing God away. And all he needed to do was open himself up to the leading of God's Holy Spirit. Incidentally, this is not the only time we see Nicodemus in the Bible. The next time was when the Jewish council met to set in motion the actions that led to Christ's crucifixion. Do you think the council vote was unanimous? It wasn't. Nicodemus was not in favor of that action but he was overruled. The next time he appears is right after Jesus was crucified. He was there. He and Joseph of Arimathea asked for the body, a bold move on his part. Then they carried it with preparation spices and laid it in a nearby tomb. Nicodemus put his position, his reputation, and even his life on the line to do this for Jesus. The spirit was working in him. He did what he was led to do. So how are we being led? Are we in control or are all the people and events of our life setting our standard for now? Have we worked through our faith and connected with the Holy Spirit? Have we passed the time of the year when we tend to think more often, more clearly, more importantly, we're past the Easter season, into the season of Pentecost now? But it wasn't too long ago when we celebrated Palm Sunday, when the crowds rejoiced at Jesus' entry into the city of Jerusalem. They cheered, waved branches, laid down their cloaks. They did it for Jesus. Then Passion Week followed, bringing out the highest of high points for some, the lowest of low points for others. Maundy Thursday and the Last Supper, which many churches recognize to this day by celebrating Holy Communion, a vital part of our overall worship. Good Friday and Jesus' crucifixion, things turn black and not just the weather. The people who knew Jesus, who recognized who he was because they were touched by the spirit in his presence, felt empty now. He was gone, but not for long. Then came Easter, and up from the grave he arose. Did his followers think his work was done? It was just the beginning. He met with his disciples and laid out his plan. Look, guys, I need you to stay together for now. Remember, I said I will send my Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Wait for it but don't just slack off while you're waiting. If you do, you'll go back to being just like you were. Pray, pray hard, pray without ceasing. Pray for the spirit to be shown through you. They waited, they prayed, 
and the Holy Spirit came. We celebrated that on Pentecost Sunday, the day when a small band of followers received that spirit with such force that they were led to run out and tell everybody about Jesus Christ, the resurrected Savior of all people. People believed and joined with them. The Christian church was born. The spirit never left them. It was passed on to others and on down through the ages, but it never diminished or lost its power. That same Holy Spirit is available to us today, doing what Jesus said he would do, counseling us, comforting us, leading us. Jesus keeps his promises, and through his Holy Spirit, he still is or can be a presence in our lives. We need to focus and keep him there as we follow the leader. Amen. At this point, I would like to invite you to open your hearts and ears and mind and let the spirit of the music and the words of our next music ministry fill you.
this time we come together as a church family to celebrate the joys that have taken place in our lives in the week and also to ask for um, communal prayers for people that need our concern and care. For those of you um, here on Zoom, you can put that into the chat. If you are on Facebook Live, you can put them in the comment section. And if you need someone to pray for you, you can call our church office or go on the website and be assured that we will be praying for you. Um, we have one chat from Diane that we would pray for all of the people in Surfside, Florida after that terrible destruction, the collapse of the, of the um, condominium there where so people are still missing, others have died, and families are waiting to um, get information about those that they love. So we definitely will hold them in our prayers. If any of you here today would like to uh, raise your hand if you have a prayer concern, we can we can have that happen as well. Eduardo? Yeah, prayer of Thanksgiving for a young couple uh, that used to come to this church, uh, Sam and Cassie Portak. They were married yesterday uh, here in the sanctuary. Uh, Nancy uh, helped with the, with the wedding and Pastor Cindy came back to uh, celebrate the wedding. So they have moved away, so they have not been uh, attending the church lately, but uh, they are still part of our family. So a uh, prayer of thanksgiving for them. Absolutely. It was a beautiful, beautiful day, and it was wonderful to see Pasty, Pastor Cindy again in, in that context, so celebrating them. Is there anyone else? I'm kind of looking through our gallery here to see if someone has a prayer request. It looks like not. So would you please join with me in a prayer? God, you have loved us so completely. You have graced us with mercy in our lives. You made us in your image. What a gift for us. And by doing that, you created in lift, left for us your Holy Spirit. Your Holy Spirit lives and dwells with all of us every second, whether we are aware of him or being there or not. And by leaving us with that spirit, we are charged to love and to care for others, to pray for those in need, to offer food and shelter for those who need that. Just a smile, a loving word can make such a difference in someone's life. And so we ask God that you remind us daily that your spirit dwells in us and that through that spirit we are so we are much more powerful to affect lives around us than we consider even possible or probable. So stay with us, guide us, be there with us to let us know when is the time that now I offer that smile, I offer that food, I offer that hug now that we can hug each other again. We pray for the people in Florida who are looking and are lost and have lost so much. We pray for those wonderful young married folk who are beginning their life together as a unified couple in your love. And we ask that you are with each and every one of us on our journey so that we know we are never, ever alone. Would you please unmute yourself at this point so that all of us can pray together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, Our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy Thank kingdom you. come, thy will, thy will be done, be done on, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us give this us day our day daily day bread, bread, and forgive, and forgive us, us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. us. Lead us not into temptation. temptation. 
Pacha 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 We want to thank everyone for being so incredibly generous to continue giving to the life of the church through the gifts and through those gifts so many possibilities happen in our church and in our community. You can always give more, but we are thankful for everything that you have continued to do and give for the church during this time. At this point, would you please unmute yourselves and we will pray together our offering prayer. Gracious one, you have given us love that stretches farther than we can see or even believe. You have given us a grace and a forgiveness that is deeper than our vulnerabilities. You have given us a healing and a hope that makes us whole. Take, Take the offerings of our, of our hearts, hearts our lives, and our lives, even, even as, as we give away all you have you given, have us. given us. Amen. Amen. And would you meet yourselves now as we go into our closing song, Someone Else Living in You. of his spirit, drink, drink, drink of his word, hold, hold, hold to his teaching, and show that you really have heard, keep, keep, keep his commandments, live, live, live in his grace, love, love, love as he first loved you, and run for the prize in the race. For there is someone else living in you For there is someone else dwelling in you For there is someone else building his kingdom in you Yes, in you For there is someone else living in you For there is someone else dwelling in you For there is someone else building his kingdom in you Drink of his spirit, drink, drink, drink of his word. Hold, hold, hold to his teachings, and show that you really have heard. Thank, thank, thank him for daily bread. Thank, thank, thank him for love. Praise, praise, praise him for Jesus' blood. Salvation's a gift from above, and there's a new day. Waiting for you, and there's a new day of healing for you, and there's a new day Jesus will come back to you, yes, for you, and there's a new day waiting for you, and there's a new day of healing for you, and there's a new day Jesus will come back for you. Drink, drink. Drink of his spirit, drink, drink, drink of his word. Hold, hold, hold to his teaching, and show that you really have heard. Sing, sing, sing with your heart on fire. Sing, sing, sing with your mind. Pray, pray, pray in the spirit, and love him with heart, soul, and mind. For there is someone else living in you For there is someone else dwelling in you For there is someone else building his kingdom in you Yes, in you For there is someone else living in you Building in you For there is someone else building his kingdom in you for there is someone else living in you. For there is someone else dwelling in you. For there is someone else building his kingdom in you.
May the light of God shine on us today. May it show us where to travel, lead us back if we should stray. May the light of God shine on us today as we follow our leader and let the light of Christ shine through us. Go in peace and spread the light. Amen. Before we end the service, I just want to thank everybody that participated and led uh, our Zoom worship today. Uh, Nancy, Scott helping in the background, Denise uh, running uh, the Zoom, and of course, Pastor Bob uh, bringing his message to us. And a reminder to all that next week is our new pastor's first Sunday with us. Uh, so we'll be here in the building at 9 a.m. and then again at 11 a.m. on Zoom. We know it's a holiday weekend, so if you happen to be away, take your computer, your device with you, and maybe you can tune in at 11 o'clock for the Zoom service. And now, uh, if you don't have to rush out, uh, we're going to spend a few minutes uh, sharing uh, our week together in a, in a time of fellowship. Thank you. And there's a new day waiting for you, and there's a new day of healing for you, and there's a new day Jesus will come back to you, yes for you, and there's a new day waiting for you, and there's a new day of healing for you, and there's a new day Jesus will come back for you.